Hello everyone, I'll be talking about Toka Satomi. Now at the ending of the video, I have to make an announcement about like the next Magical Girl I'll be going over. And also two other Magical Girls that I will be going over. My friend, who um, says she wants to narrate them and I'll explain them more at the ending of this video. So let's get on with the Toka Satomi story and info. Unlike other magical girls being the ages of 14 to 16 to 19 years old, Toka Satomi is one of the younger magical girls. She is 11 years old, 148 centimeters high. Her hair and eyes are reset color and is originally from Hogi Award in Kimihama City. Her soul gem is a red bow shaped gem on her ribbon located on her neck and her weapon's a parasol. Her witch and doppel is Pinanoba, and her known relatives is her unnamed father, her uncle Tasuke Satomi, and her cousin Nayutasa Satomi, who is also a magical girl. But since Nayutasa is a very new magical girl appearing in Narc 2, there's not really much I can talk about her, so let's begin with the West. Toka attends St. Lydia Academy and is in the 5th grade. Her wish is to convert power. I wish for the power to convert allow us to take them from Yukube. Her magical girl element is the flame element and her ability is energy conversion. A magical girl who is trying to create a world without witches. The daughter and patient of the doc director of Satomi Medical Center, Toka is an astrophysics prodigy. Surrounded by a wall of gadgets and devices, she continues to research her one dream, to know everything about the universe. The Doppel of Daydreaming Its form is a mass seller. The master of this emotion desires more power even after becoming a magical girl. In, other, in order to achieve more wishes, the doppel divides its master's lifespan up into matches and grants a what-if wish whenever a match is lit. When the doppel runs out of matches, the master's life is over. It is very powerful but similar to a Similar to the doppel of, a di of dying wishes, it mustn't be abused for it sacrifices one's own lifespan. In the main story of Magio Chord, Toko's role in the story is being one of the leaders of the antagonist group, the Wings of Magius. He first appeared in Iroha Tamaki's flashbacks as Uri Tamaki's friend alongside Nemu Huragi when she was listed in the hospital. She is mentioned by Iroha along with Uri and Nemu, but when Toka encounters Iroha to get them, Iroha's friends to join the Wings of Magius, she claims to not remember Iroha or Uri and said Uri is a figment of Iroha's imagination. She was also the one who revealed the truth of the witches and the soul gems. To remind you, this spoils important details to Magia Record main story. You have been warned. Toka's side story begins. Influence on Kimihama, Kyubei is not allowed to enter Kimihama due to the forest field that surrounds the area of Kimihama. Toka, Nemu, Alia, and Mifu talk about the recent arrivals of the Imani sisters to the team. See that six members is far significant to gather enough energy to lead a project they made into fruition. Alia suggests Mifu be part of the recruitment due to her size as being a veteran magical girl. However, Mifu refuses. Mifu states that if she starts recruitment in Kimihama, there will be a possible confusion of her reappearance in the western sectors of the city. Yashio might also look for her if she begins outside of the city. No one will know her since she is a stranger outside Kimihama, which had looped it back to the beginning of the Mifu sneeze all of a sudden. Mifu explains she feels a little sick. 
after moving out of her family home, which she was able to do with the help of Toka. They asked if she could just heal herself up with magic because she was a magical girl, but Mifu says she prefers to stay sick as it's all the few human things about herself. The following day, the dream magius returned with each other, but Mifu was absent, so they, they then began to talk about the problems of recruiting new members. Nimbu brings up the harshness of magical girl fate and moral implications of the means that they will use to attain their goals. Toka mentions if they begin recruiting members who don't know the witch's system, they will look like a cult. Further, the limiting potential magical girl's options on joining the Wings of Magius. Toka says they desperately between supply and demand which earns her a sparky quip from Mew, Nimu. I had to stop Toka and Nimu before the argue get, got even further. She used a topic to distract them back on topic. Toka says that Mewu should take recruitment anyway, but only in the eastern parts instead, where she is less known. Toka then says they can extend their potential in the, the magical girl pool to girls who have a hard time fighting witches. Toko remarks how much a genius she is, but Nemo remarks how putting come with us if you want to be saved is going to make them sound more like a cult, which they did not want. As Toko begins restoring in raw statistics, Nemo limits about the fact it's ju just the six of them to recruit people around Kimihama. While Aya leads the conversation, she focuses on how to enhance the force field and taking about Nimu's rumor creations. That is when Alia got a message from Mifu saying she will not be able to come to the meeting today since she, because her call had gotten worse. Alia sends a message to Mifu saying she can stay home. Nemo gets an idea of sending radio waves to communicate messages to the most efficient with emails and phone messages and others. Toko agrees and Nemo decides to go with the idea in a test run. Later on, Toko sneaks into Mifio's living quarters where she finds Mifio asleep with dinner she bought from the convenience store. Mifio sleeps in a discomfort, however, Toko decides to help Mifio by giving her a humid cold towel and putting it over her, her forehead. Toka is surprised she's taking care of stuff. Mifu wakes up soon after and offers Toka tea even if being sick. But Toka refuses, demanding that she rest well. But Toka refuses, demanding she rest up. However, Mifu is awake. Toka decides to use Mifu as a guinea pig for her transmission test run and messages Nemu to inform her of the situation and launch the experiment. Soon after, Mifu begins hearing singing, which makes the experiment a success. The song itself was a song of nature. Nurture would sing to Toko. I mean, it's a song that Nurse would sing to talk Toko when she was hospitalized. She chose this, this time of song knowing of Mifu's sickness in hopes it makes Mifu feel better. Mifu agrees with her. She quickly deduces that the experiment is actually meant to help with the recruitment of magical girls using radio waves. Having found that the witches are si and similar creatures, only magical girls can be tuned to a si specific frequency. Toka decided to use this specific wavelength to send a message only magical girls can hear with, with the beyond of Kimihama. Mifu praises Toka and then finds a renewal vigor, telling Toka she would she will be right back on her feet the next day. But Toka asks her not to overwork herself. Back at the Magia's HQ with Mifu now back. The mages have to wet sand an angry Toka after Yashijo who came out unharmed 
had defeated the Saint on Shrine rumor, Mifuyu acknowledges with Yachicho having a new ally that being Iwa Tamaki on her side and that they got to be more careful next time. Suggests to make more rumors but Alia says they should use a witch and since doubles and witches are similar to one another, Mifuyu says that form of method is too harsh. Aya says spreading awareness of the truth is the best option. Toka says they should create rumors that are scary enough to inflict trauma on their victims. This shocks Mifuyu and she scolds Toka, saying they will not s sacrifice people for the sake of their goals. As long as magical girls aren't in danger of becoming witches, they can take their time. However, Nemu is agrees with Toka and reminds Mifuyu that she uses her own life force to create rumors that will that's using a low quality ones will be a waste. Alia also agrees as she can't turn down an offer to create a beautiful art. Mifuyu relents her desire not to cause more sacrifices than necessary. But Toka snaps her and goes away. Mifuyu objects are, are putting a stop to the Meiji's plans as if they stall out too long. People might eventually figure out what the rumors are and the feathers might also be caught and spill the beans. Nimu does admit Mifuyu has a point. If they lose sight of their moral sight standing, their plans will fall as the feathers are still human. They might sense danger and deflect from the mage's meaning to quit. Mifuyu repeats a Tremona's weight in the mage's thanks to her popularity and she's and should she leave herself, the organization, organization may collapse. In a mad Toka goes somewhere else, somewhere else to cool off, as she believes she is not digging straight. Nimu expresses her relief over Toka noticing, which upsets the le leisure, who asks her why she hasn't told her directly in the first place if she knew. To which Nimu replies, "I will only have made her angrier." Back in her room, Toka ponders what she could possibly do to help Mifuyu understand. She compares the magical girl system to a dog-eat-dog world and a survival of the fittest, and says she's really do anything to survive as well. The next day at St. Lilia Academy, Toka is tasked to do some group work with which bores her out. A younger classmate asks Toka to explain division to her, but Toka braids her for failing to grasp a concept so simple to her. The teacher tries to explain to Toka that this girl only started studying division, but Toka resorts by saying she knew about it far before her age. She then adds that while people can't gossip, grasps concepts as easily as she can. She believes she cl she's clever enough to explain them, which is indirect praise directed at Toka. She finally sails on teaching the girl who do how to do division. As the lesson continues, Toka tries explaining the girl about factions, but the teacher informs her it's currently outside of the program. She sails on reminders instead, and the girl comments a uh, about how she reminder looks lonely. Suspended from the rest of the numbers, which confuses Toka. While trying to keep her calm, Toka tells the girl numbers don't have feelings and that it should be fine. The girl insists the numbers all get, should all get along and, the, and that as a group leader. Toka should have a way to figure this out. Toka snaps at her and angry relents the numbers are merely concepts and that there is no other thing to do with them but to write th that down as instead. The girl however begins to cry and Toka realizes she made a mistake as the teacher her drags her aside and begins scolding her. Toka relents that getting rid of the reminder is the only way to have an answer. 
The statement, however, makes something click in Toka's mind, and she decides she had enough of being a be- being a patient, and will tell Mifu once she sees her again. With a new renewal resolved and an unusually foul mood, Toka meets again with Mimu to tell her about her plans to use the radio frequencies to drag in more witches in Kimihama and use more dangerous rumors, as it is the most cost significant solution they have before. Nemu states that Mifuyu won't be pleased with the outcome, but Toka says that she, as the genius, she gets to decide whatever she wants. Mifuyu indirectly arrives right after, and Toka explains her point of view to her at once, and all, and all of it. She claims that it's necessary for now in order to make a better future. The next part in the, is in the past when Toka is hospitalized in the hospital with Ui and Nemu. Toka is playing a video game with Iroa and Iroa is losing. Ui says Iroa isn't good at games. Iroa says she is better at base turn games like Soji. Like Soji. Shog- Shogi. And Iroa says how she is glad they get to play games together. Toka explains she got this game from one of her dad's acquaintances who knew about her love of space. Most of the games Toka is gifted have equational content and educational content, which Nemu remarks on. However, Toka explains she already knows all of that. Uh, while Iwa praises Toka for her knowledge, Ui remarks it might have nothing to do with it at all with being good at games. Iwa then orders all three girls to stop playing video games and do their homework. Iwa remarks that huge break between classes and asks if that means they have a lot of homework. Ui replies that they only have one big assignment to do, self-study. Nemo explains that they don't they have to com- compile information on a hobby or interest and make a presentation about it. And those without a hobby can l- look things up online. Ui asks what Ido will present and she answers that she'll talk about cooking and baking. As these are two topics she knows best, Iroa returns the question, and Ui answers that she's going to look into what people sing in school, of course. While well, Nemo will do her part on her favorite books, particularly physiological children's stories. So I guess it's that Tokoro will do a presentation about space. But guesses that she'll do more of a full-blown class than a simple presentation. However, she is greatly upset to Toka by accident. Iwa quickly apologizes, but Toka says that it's not her fault, but rather something else that has happened. Explain that another interior sense that Toka decided against doing her project about space and rather focus on quantum computers, Ui is a little disappointed, being eager to watch Toka talk about space. The teacher calls Toka and asks her as well if she'll do something in space. She believes that even if the students might not understand the tricky parts, that she'll do a good job at teaching them and making them interested about the topic. However, Toka refuses unwillingly to share her knowledge as she's worked it hard to to gather it. Back in the hospital, Iroa guesses that people would still like to hear Toka talk about space, which disappoints the ledger, and as she realizes everyone is in the favor of her taking about talking about space. She is expressive refusal over teaching people about this as she claims she already had too much stolen from her. She tearfully explains that she understands she's she's a burden for the rest of her life and the hospital doesn't allow her to leave because the world is better outside and that if 
He experiences firsthand she'll never want to come back. All that Toka knows of the world is the Satomi Medical Center. She only gets her knowledge of the outside world through the internet. She random misses about her father, who never misses a chance to remind her how proud he is of her and her ability to learn so quickly. He informs that Toka should use her smarts to help the rest of the community around her. Toka is worried at the notion of giving back, but her father tells her that she'll give her anything. He'll give her anything she wants if she completes. I mean, complies. She asks about living under the same roof as her parents, about finally being free. However, her father couldn't give her that, as she still was very sick and needs to remain at the hospital for further treatment. Toga therefore decides to never give back anything to anyone as anything she ever gave out to people, she will never give anything back in return. Toka mutes about outer space, the other world that even gave her anything. She admitted the cosmos for its limitless freedom and its endless ability to be discovered over and over. She got to learn things only she knew, which is why outer space is it so important to her. Suddenly, she feels a sharp pain in her back, which mobilizes her. Later on, a sleeping Toka is awoken by the same lullaby she used to transmit the radio waves in the in the patient, in the, in the present. It is revealed that the nurse who used to sing this song to her is no one other than Ido herself. Toka asks what Ido is doing here and Ido offers her a present, which is an apple pie. She baked it herself. Ido was feeling bad after offering Toka the other day offending Toka the other day, which is why she made an apple pie for her. Toka laments about how she couldn't eat it, but Iroha reassures her that she obtained her father's guidance to prepare it without any ingredients that, it, that she couldn't eat. Toka taste tests it and finds the pie to be incredibly delicious. Iroha explains she could teach Toka little thing after little thing. To make her happy like this in the, the same fashion she she ex requested that toka to share her knowledge about the outer space and one more time to make them just as happy Ira tries the pie and is surprised at the taste it's herself toka agrees the next day toka arrives late to class however she brought a lot of classroom materials for her, for everyone if they want to learn about space. She claims that she should start with constellations first. She then tells Ui that her older sister Idoa is much like Peppa Pepsi. Pe I mean, she tells Ui that her sister Idoa is much like a beta pegasi. However, she doesn't give Ui an explanation, telling Ui to look it up herself. Toka is responsible for creating doppels. The magicals use to fight if they accept their fates of their wishes. Toka can also absorb energy from surroundings and use it to prevent her soldier from tainting, no matter how much magic she uses. Her magia is rainbow fire, meaning she can use rainbows and then and they will burst into flames. Toka's last name means village and to see, respectively. Her first name means light and flower. Fact number one. Her doppel, Pena Noble, bears a striking resemblance to Iroha Tamaki's doppel, Giovanni. The reason for this has yet to be explained. However, this has been confirmed by the guidebook 
to be because of Toka being inspired by Iroha to become a magical girl and wishing to save Iroha from her fate of magical girls. Fact 2, her doppel is a reference to Little Match Girl by a Danish author Hans Christian Andersen. The story resolves around a dying girl hopes, wishes, hopes and wishes. She's seeing one every time she lights a match. However, the matches go out in the cold snow and she loses a bit of her life force. Which is what Paranormal does to Toka every time she lights a match when she uses it. Fact number 3, Toka's Japanese voice actor is Rai Kuchimaya, who plays Mechi in the animation of Shin Megami Tensei Devil's Children, Goho in Inuyasha, and Reisei Kuchikawa in Persona for the animation and the video games. This voice actor is Michelle Maria, who is known for voicing Sumi Nakahara in Demon Slayer, Leaf in Pokemon Masters, Omiyam Orion in The Legends of Heroes, Tales Hold Seal 3. We now reach the ending of Toka Satomi's story. In the next Magical Girl story and info, my best friend Callan will be voicing it instead of me this time. So I hope you enjoy it. And also has the right she also has the right to pick any other Magical Girl story she wants to voice too. I know she will be able to do the she's gonna do the Imani Sisters too. So next time, I'll read a great story and info explaining. See ya.